You're watching Telecom TV and joining me now in our London studio is Phil Mottram, Vice President of Communications and Media Solutions at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Phil, welcome to Telecom TV. Thank you. What are the main challenges that telcos are currently facing? Um, well, look, I think there's a range of uh, challenges that telecoms operators are facing right now. I think a lot of them have got big 5G investments that they're looking to make. Um, and sometimes there's not an obvious business case necessarily to justify those investments. So uh, I think that's one of the challenges that they face. And then the other one I think that they are all wrestling with is what's their position in the market versus some of the OTT players and you know where do they fit? Are they kind of competing with them or are they more at the kind of dumb pipe end of the market? So I think they're the big challenges that operators are facing right now. And the mobile operators are looking very much at 5G now. 5G is not just an evolution of 4G, it's more than that. So what are the additional benefits that 5G brings to telcos and their customers? Yeah, I think that's right. I think, um, you know, some people are just saying, oh, it's just another number, so three, four, and then 5G. But I think it is more than that in terms of the network transformation that will underpin it. I think you'll see quite radical changes in the services that telecoms operators are willing or able to provide to the market. So I think, obviously, speed will be... One one of the benefits associated with 5G, I think some of the lower latency as well that can be delivered over the network, I think that will provide an opportunity for them to provide different services. And I think when you look at things like, you know, autonomous vehicles, those sorts of things, you know, if uh, that technology takes off, and I'm sure it will do uh, more and more, then you probably need lower latency for some of those services. And I think the other side of it as well would be the opportunity for 5G slicing. So that would allow an operator to be able to carve their network up and offer different levels of services for different customers based on which network slice they were on. So I think that's uh, where 5G is kind of different to 3G or 4G. So how can HPE help? So I think HPE can help in a number of areas. On the 5G side, I think operators face um, a choice, really. Some operators would want to go for more of an end-to-end -end solution provided by maybe one of the traditional network providers, and that's, uh, that's all good with us. Whereas with uh, some other operators, they're more looking for probably a more cloud-native, open approach. And where they go down that route, I think that's where they should be having a conversation with HPE. And the way I'd like to position it is almost like a cake, if you like. So if you think about the layers on the cake, the first layer on the cake is the infrastructure. Obviously, that's what HPE is famous for. We've got great server storage, that sort of technology. And specifically for the telco sector, we're looking to offer that infrastructure on a consumption-based model, okay? So as opposed to the telecoms operator saying, you know, I need to buy this infrastructure and here's a big check, what we would do is sit down and say, okay, well, what are you going to use infrastructure for? And then how might we be able to charge you for that on a consumption-based model? So that's the first layer of the cake. And then sitting on top of the cake is obviously the software and services that HP can provide. And that's where CMS comes into play because what we're able to do is offer some of the network functions that an operator would need to deploy for 5G in a cloud native and open environment. So that's the way to think about it is infrastructure at one end, uh, software, network functions and services at another end, and we would propose to offer that to carriers on a consumption-based model. So what expertise does the CMS business have? So the CMS organisation is about 5,000 people strong. Uh, we're spread all around the world, uh, supporting um, exclusively telecoms operators, where we provide software support and services to telecoms operators around the world. We mainly focus in the areas of kind of uh, operational support systems, so OSS systems, uh, BSS systems. We do things around fraud analytics. Uh, and then the hotter areas right now would obviously be 5G that we've just talked about. Uh, digital identity, that's another big area. And then last but not least, it would be a kind of service orchestration. And this is where telecoms operators are looking to introduce services uh, faster into the market. And when they do uh, introduce those services, they need a good orchestration platform to allow them to introduce those services across the network. Now, you mentioned digital identification there. Why is this area attracting a lot of attention now? So the reason digital identity is important to telecoms operators is increasingly on the consumer side, um, customers are buying more than one device. So you might have a phone, you might have an iPad, you might have a particular watch, that, and you need the technology to link all of these devices together. 
Uh, and then underpinning it, obviously, you've got different network technologies as well. So you might have kind of 4G, 5G technology or Wi-Fi technology as well. So you've got these kind of multiple devices across multiple technologies with multiple device manufacturers. And what HPE CMS does is we kind of link all that together for our customers. So what's your message for telcos? Why should they partner with HPE? So the reason telecoms operators should talk to HPE CMS um, is if they're concerned about how should they deploy 5G and they want to make sure that the network they deploy is open cloud native so they're able to roll out services faster, they should definitely have a conversation with us about that. If they're looking to roll out more services to the market to compete maybe with some of the OTT players, then we can provide a faster way to roll out those services. And if they're interested in better customer satisfaction, and they recognize the fact that more of their customers are using multiple device types across these different technologies, then they should talk to us about our digital identity products as well. Great. Phil, thank you very much indeed. No problems. Thanks for talking to me.